this video is going to take us through, uh, well, the end goal is that we will be able to have a persisted login state for a mobile phone. So like many mobile apps, when you do a login, we're going to store off the authentication token to local storage. And then when you come back in on the same phone to this app, the app will look for that local storage key of auth token. And if it's still a valid token by checking against the Xano API, then it will let you in to the list. So that's our goal, but I've been making it a habit, maybe it's one time so far, but this will be two, of cleaning up some of the technical debt or messy code that I have left behind. So this time I had enough items that I've got a bit of a list. So we're gonna see how quickly we can get through this. It's 12.38 right now my time. I'm gonna give it somewhere between five and eight minutes to see if we can get this stuff cleaned up so that we don't pull forward our technical no-code debt. Okay, so first item in the list. Move toast to zero from negative 20. So I'm gonna hit the login button and look at the bottom of the screen after this, because that's another cleanup. There we go, login failed as it should but that's way at the bottom and kind of hard to notice. So we're gonna start right in with um, cleaning up this debug alert that I should not have left in. I'm then going to tie from the login button press tap through the login create record. I'm gonna tie it to the failure directly as opposed to through that alert. And then you will see that as optional inputs, there is a toast position of negative 20. If you hover over these, pretty helpful lets you know that negative is uh, pixels from the bottom and positive is pixels from the top and zero is right in the middle. But what I'm gonna do instead of just hard coding this, I think we're gonna get fancy here and I'm gonna go to variables and I'm gonna create an app variable that stores the toast position. And we are gonna make that a number and it's already set to zero. And so we're gonna use this variable anytime we put a uh, toast component on the canvas. So I'm gonna come back to the login, back to toast. Um, in the optional inputs, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna bind this to a data variable. It's obviously an app variable, we just created it, and save. And just to show you what it does, we're gonna change that in one more spot, but just to show you what it does, it gets it in my mind right in front of your eyes and it's a little easier in that two seconds that we have it configured for uh, to make sense to people or for people to be able to see it. Um, I also removed, I'm gonna check these off as I go, remove login alert. Okay, um, we also in sign up, I bet you we have, I'm gonna go into the sign up screen and we're gonna take a look and see if we have a toast there because I think we do, there it is. So while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and go into data variables, app variables and set that one as well. So now we have a standard approach to the toast showing up in the middle of the screen for people and disappearing after two seconds. So the next thing that I'm looking at is I want to, if you notice here on the screen, the, um, the notch in an iPhone ends up being a little bit close like that. See, that just doesn't really look good. We're covering up some of our, uh, some of our logo there. So I'm gonna go into the image that's holding that logo and dimension and position. And we're just gonna pick, let's say 32 pixels and see if we don't get a little bit better placement. There we go. That looks a little bit nicer. Okay, flipping back and forth. So now we've changed the logo on sign up to a 32 pixel from eight. Now we're going to use that same logo on the login page so we get a little visual continuity on our pages. Now the nice thing is I don't really have to worry about recreating this. I've just clicked on it. I'm gonna do the copy from the keyboard and then I am gonna jump over to login. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the app Giver logo put this one in there and it sticks it at the bottom as you would expect and I'm gonna come over to the side because it's easier and I'm gonna drag it to the top 
And now we've done that. So now in a login, we have our logo on the login screen as well. There, so as you can see, now we have login and create new account. I always click on the screen. There we go. Uh, and the other thing is just a straight out bug that I introduced originally. We're gonna go back to the sign up. When I do a sign up, click on the sign up button and create record. I'm just missing the initial view when the sign up is successful. But what I'm not doing is setting the auth token that we use through the app variable to actually get us a valid list. So right now, if I were to sign or do a sign up, I would get a blank list of to do's because it doesn't see that I've been authenticated. So what I need to do is set the app variable after we successfully create this record. And I'm going to show you another bug that I have in here that I left because um, as opposed to fixing it ahead of it, I'm going to show you what it looks like, how I broke it. So I want to set an app variable. I know I want to set off token, so that's great. And the assign variable is going to be from the output value of another node, and it's going to be the create record. But if you notice here, what I would expect to see from the sign up in Xano is a response that contained not an ID, but an off token. So it took me a couple of minutes to figure out what I was doing wrong here. And I think I even had this problem in a prior video and just kind of glossed over it and then forgot about it. But I figured out what my problem is. The reason I don't see off token is if I come back to data, so I'm going back to the definition of the data resource, which is our connection back to Xano, and I go into sign up. And for sign up, it uses the create record or the post. And I look at the schema, if you notice I never set the schema record. So right now AppGyver has no idea what comes back from a successful sign up. So what we're gonna do is do our normal debug testing that we would normally do when we add a new data resource. But this time I'm doing a little bit of cleanup. So we've got test account, let's say eight. It's test account eight at email.com and our standard unsafe password. When I save that, so I've set those and I run my test, now I get an off token. Now this time I'm actually gonna set it and see, now it shows up in the schema down at the bottom. So I'm gonna save that data resource setting, get those out of the way, and we are gonna go back in here to the sign up, and for the set app variable, when I click on that, and I pick the sign value, and I go back into the another node and create record. Now I actually have my auth token. So we're good there. So now when you do a sign up, you're setting the auth token you get on success. And then when you dismiss the initial view and go to the to-do list, the to-do list puts bearer space on the front of that auth token. And then that auth token is used in every uh, to-do list call so things will work so we got that one fixed another problem I had um, if you go into create new account and just hit sign up the account is well that's interesting <laughs> the account is already in use because I was testing this before I started the video back to Xano just to keep up with where I'm going looking at user if you notice, I have a blank user here. I'm gonna delete it because I wanna show kind of the bug I created. When I come in and click sign up, it actually brings me in and assumes everything is good. Um, when in reality, what I created when I refresh this, I allowed my mobile app and worse, my backend API to create an empty user ID uh, for for the platform, for the to-do platform. So I'm gonna delete that, and we're gonna make a change to an API that I messed up earlier. And we're gonna come into this, and it's gonna be the sign up because that's what we were doing. And what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add a precondition at the very front of this function stack to confirm that email and password are not blank. And only if they are non-blank values 
will it go down to the remainder of the API calls? So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We are going to do a utility function and we're gonna pick the precondition. Now put it down at the bottom by default as you would expect and we'll move it to where we need it here shortly, but we're gonna go ahead and set it up first. So the first thing I wanna do is from input, I wanna make sure that email, and I'm gonna use add filter because I wanna make sure email um, empty is gonna be equal to false. So there are, there it is. There is a comparison filter for is empty. I'm gonna update that. And I wanna make sure that input email is empty equals false. So I'm gonna go over to constants, scroll and pick false. So this means that if, what it's saying if I get rid of the neg double neg negative of is empty and false, is this is making sure that the uh, email has something in it. And I also want to do that. So I'm gonna pick the plus and an and. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the input of the password. I am gonna add the same filter. Come over here and type is empty. And so I'm now doing logic against this text being passed in as password. And I'm also gonna drop this down and pick, scroll over to the filter, pick constant, scroll down to false. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that both email and password have to have values for this precondition to be successful. And if it doesn't, so email and password must have values. If this precondition isn't passed, then you will see this error message. So let's go ahead and save that API. Let's see how close I got to getting this right on the fly. So we were doing a uh, sign up. And if I just hit sign up, there it is. Email and password must have values. So at this point, the APIs have protected, protected the platform and the database, so I can't get invalid data into the user fields at this point. What I'll probably do at some point as well uh, is go ahead and add that same capability to the front end so that we filter it before we make the API call. Minimally, you have to have that filter on your API, even more important than having it in the user interface because anybody else who were to use that API for your platform in the future, they won't have your user interface logic of the mobile app, and so the API needs to protect your platform. That's just kind of a great coding and no coding mantra to follow. Okay, and then there is a formula. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I have this formula that I determined, um, and I'm gonna walk you through it but I wanna put this formula uh, for the login uh, like we are gonna do in sign up as well. So let's go ahead and when I choose, let me see where I have this here. Put the formula error message for login like sign up. Okay, I'm actually gonna pass on that one for now if I get a pass. And then we're gonna pass on the second one as well because I've noticed, well, I'm doing pretty good on time, I guess. I'm rolling through these. Let's uh, fix this one. This one is gonna create me duplicate logic. Right now, I am setting the bearer token anywhere I would call an API. Um, and really what I wanna do is there's only two locations where I set the auth token. It's when I do a login and when I do a sign up. And so in those two places, I'm gonna attach bearer space on the front of those so that anywhere else in the application, I can just reference auth token as an app variable and not have to worry about whether or not I made it a valid HTTP bearer token. Okay, so that means sign up, we're here, we're setting an app variable. I'm gonna change this to be a formula or no, I'm not, because this is set app variable. I am going to uh, 
Dun, dun, dun. Oh, looking at the wrong spot. We are going to where we pull it from, not where we're putting it to. We're going to set a formula. And since we already have the output from another node, it's going to carry that into here for me. And I am going to add bearer space to the front of it. So that is an example of what it's going to look like, which is wonderful. Make sure I have no space there. OK. So now for sign up, I have it as auth token. I want to do that, sorry, bearer space and an auth token. I want to do the exact same thing for login. Set the app variable. Instead of getting it just from the node, I'm going to go to the formula again. And I am going to add in there. We'll save that. And now the next thing I need to do is go change the um, to do list. This is the only place right now, I think, where I've attached a data variable. So I'm going to the variables of the to-do list. I'm going to data variables where I have this. And over here, you'll see where I'm putting a uh, bearer on the front of that. And what I'm going to do is now change this to just pull from data and variables, app variable auth token, because I've already prepended the bearer space onto the front of that when we originally retrieve it. There we go. And I think at this point, I don't think I've done anything with to-do detail on the bearer token here. I have not. So this is a bug I hadn't really realized I had. When we hit the detail screen, which we have set up, I want the authorization to be the auth token. There we go. So now when we go into detail, we'll have a valid auth token for that as well. And once again, did not have to worry about remembering bearer space. Let me make sure that to-do list. Yeah, so those all look good. Let's see here. OK, so we should have a functioning app still after all of those changes. I am going to attempt, I don't remember which ones have the right passwords. I've been messing with stuff a little too much. But what we're going to do is attempt to do a login. There we go. Uh, see if we still, yep. So we still have the detail working. We still have the list with authentication working. Um, if I get out of the app and come back in, let's see if we can still create an account at. <laughs> Mail.com, and we're going to create a new account. There we go. Oh, why did I do that? I'm on login, silly me. Okay, so I copy and paste the email. I go to create new account. We'll paste that. You get to watch me type again. Put in the password. I am really not with it, am I? Okay. And then we'll just put in anything and do a sign up. There we go. So we get in there OK as well. So I have a sign up, which means if I come all the way back over to Xano into the database, I will see here's the old one. I'm going to get rid of this. This is the one that no longer can happen. We don't allow empty. And then here's the new setup. OK. So we're now functional on cleanup. 